How's it going everyone? I wanted to do a quick video today on wpload.php. This is a file that I kind of came across recently that we've been using for a couple tasks at work and I wanted to show you guys how we were using it and you know, show you when not to use it too. So I hope you find this tutorial helpful and remember if you're new here, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so wpload.php is found at the root of your WordPress installation. Let me zoom in here real quick. And you can see right here, we've got wpload.php. And essentially what this does more or less is it bootstraps WordPress, it loads WordPress as the name would imply. So it's kind of a cool little find um, for a couple projects that we've been working on where we've had to kind of do some trickery with WordPress. So I wanna do a quick example of more or less what we were doing with it and then give a couple examples as when not to use it too and when to kind of go the more standard route. So let's start off by opening up our WP content folder and I've got 2019 installed in here. So I'm going to just make a new file and I'm gonna call this some task.php, right? So an empty file within our theme. Now. I want to move over back to our uh, browser here and I'm going to open up a window. Let's see, WP load slash local. And if we were to try and navigate to WP content slash themes slash 2019. Oh, come on. And then we were to try and load. Oh, let's see what a file is in here. If we tried to just load like single.php right off the bat. We wouldn't be able to do it. It would uh, try and uh, call get header, which is a WordPress function, and it's not gonna do it, right? We can't call those files directly. So what we need is we need to accomplish some sort of task, and we need WordPress to be loaded while we're doing it so we can interact with WordPress as we normally could. So if I were to just like, you know, go to do, uh, do like something like, let's see, get post. And I'm gonna get the first post that I got, right? If I go to some task.php, it's gonna say again that get post doesn't exist, right? So that becomes difficult if you're trying to do things within the WordPress space, but you need to have something execute in isolation. So there's a kind of a fun little you know, two line function here that all it really does is it looks for wherever your WP content folder is and then it just call and then we require wpload.php which is right next to WP content. So now when we do get post one and we var dump it, we actually get the first hello world post. So this is really nice because now we can start doing some fancier things, right? And so I've got a little example here. And for those who have been watching my channel, I love the swappy API. So it's all about Star Wars stuff. And I just made this quick little loop. So we're going to go and we're going to go to the uh, uh, planets section of the rest API on swappy.co. And we are going to do it five times and we're going to get the planets and we're gonna get the results. We're gonna loop over those results and then right here, we are going to insert a post, right? So that's a really nice little function because you know if you weren't working inside of WordPress, you would have to do some like crazy SQL queries and you're going to mess up and having a function like WP insert post takes care of a lot for you. And you can even do some like nice error checking as well. If something goes wrong inside of WordPress, you can then use like if it's a WP error and out start outputting things to the screen that would let you know whether or not things were successful. So we were kind of using this as like a site scraper and we were scraping content from one of our sites to another to kind of get it into our workflow. But I feel like this example shows off exactly when this might be a useful thing, right? So if we go to our uh, browser again and hit refresh, 
We're gonna let it do its thing, and then it says that all of these planets were inserted successfully. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. But now we can go back to our posts. We can hit refresh, and they're all drafts because I didn't set the post status, but I hope it shows us in the post content what the terrain is. That's what we were trying to put in our post content was the planet terrain. So this is a really nice little way to go about doing things if you need to accomplish a certain task on a certain file. Now, this is not something you would throw into like a production environment or anything like that. What I would suggest actually is using just the normal admin-ajax.php. And the reason being is that you want to make it so other people can turn that on and off, or you wanna make sure that it goes in the normal WordPress workflow. What I have in front of me is very rogue and will not fall in line with anything. This is something that I will, you know, I will do this once my posts are in WordPress and then I'm gonna delete this file, right? So the nice thing about doing it this way versus doing it in admin-ajax.php is that admin-ajax.php actually fires a bunch of hooks, right? So if we're racing against PHP timeouts or something like that, we don't want to have all of those things firing because if we have lots of plugins installed, all of those are going to be like, yeah, I want to jump in on that hook and start doing stuff too. And we don't want to have to deal with any of that. So anyway, this is kind of like a little WordPress development tip slash trick that I found pretty nice. And I hope that you do too. Hopefully it solves a problem or two for you. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. Let me know if you've tried it out and what you did with it, or if you've got a better way. So also make sure to like the video if you did like it and subscribe if you are new here. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.